So let's go ahead and work a couple of specific examples now that we know what the sampling theorem is and that it is what tells us how to properly sample a signal. So this first example, required sampling example number one, we are going to find a condition on the sampling period t sub s to correctly sample this continuous time signal. x of t equals 4 sine 2 pi t plus cosine of 5 pi t plus 0.1 plus cosine of pi t. So this is the continuous time signal that we want to sample according to the sampling theorem to avoid aliasing. And we're actually asked to find a condition on the sampling period t sub s. So we'll see what that means here in just a minute. So the key thing with any problem like this is identifying the largest frequency because to apply the sampling theorem we need to know the maximum frequency and then we multiply that by 2 and that is the slowest rate at which we should ever sample. So this problem is actually a little simple. Normally given a continuous time x of t we would need to compute the Fourier transform to identify which signals or which frequency components are present in the signal. However, since this problem is actually written as a sum of sinusoids, we can just actually look at each term and know the frequency. So this first term for sine, it has an omega of 2 pi. The second term has an omega of 5 pi. And this last term has an omega of pi. So looking at all of these, it's very easiest to see which of these terms has the largest frequency, and it's this term right here in the middle, the cosine term. So just by visually inspecting this, since it's just a sum of sinusoids, it's kind of a special case, we can pick off the largest frequency very easily, and the largest frequency is omega m equals 5 pi. So just by inspection, we know that the maximum frequency is 5 pi. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and convert that to a linear frequency. So when we go from a radial frequency to a linear frequency, we do that just by dividing by 2 pi. So 5 pi over 2 pi, the pi's cancel, 5 over 2 is 2 and a half. So the largest frequency is 2.5 hertz. So now that we know what the largest frequency is, we can apply the sampling theorem. By the sampling theorem, we know that we must sample at 2 times fm or greater. So if we actually plug this in, 2 times 2 and a half gives us 5. So our sampling rate must be 5 samples per second or larger. So we must have f sub s greater than or equal to 5. That's not what this question was asking for. This question was asking for what is the condition on the sampling period. Period is time, but it's related to f sub s. And in fact, it's related by the inverse. So we can actually just take this inequality and we can invert it. So fs turns into 1 over fs. 5 turns into 1 over 5. And then when you're working with inequalities, greater than or equal to turns into less than or equal to. So we've just inverted this inequality. And now looking at this, I know what 1 over fs is. 1 over fs is equal to t sub s. So if we replace that, this tells us that t sub s needs to be less than or equal to one-fifth of a second. And that is the answer that we are looking for. At most, we would sample every one-fifth of a second. But we could always go smaller than that. We could go an eighth of a second, or a thirty-second of a second, or 0 0.000001. Any of those work, but this upper bound right here is the condition that we were looking for. t sub s less than or equal to one-fifth. All right, let's do another one. Required sampling example number two. So this one's a little bit different. We're still going to find a condition on the sampling period, but instead of given an equation for x of t, we are given a sketch of the Fourier transform of x of omega. So for this particular problem, x of omega, the Fourier transform of the continuous time signal x of t, it looks like these two triangles in the frequency domain. Again, with any sampling problem, the key thing is identifying the largest frequency in the signal. Since we don't have x of t, we're just given x of omega, that makes our job actually a little bit easier because x of omega tells us what frequencies are present. And by looking at this picture, we can tell that the largest frequency is the frequency 3 pi. So that is the largest frequency present. So since omega m equals 3 pi, that's the maximum radial frequency, we can compute fm, 
That's just 3 pi over 2 pi, it's just our standard conversion from radial to linear frequency, which tells us that the largest frequency is 1.5 hertz. So that means by the sampling theorem, we need to sample at a rate of 2 times fm, which is 2 times 1.5 or 3. So we require fs being greater than or equal to 3. And then as before, I can invert this inequality. 1 over fs needs to be less than or equal to 1 third, but 1 over fs is just t sub s. 1 over fs is just t sub s. So this tells us that our sampling period needs to be less than or equal to a third. So I can sample every one third of a second, or I can sample every fourth, or one fifth, or one sixth, but one third is the largest period in between samples in terms of time that I should ever have. So this is the condition on T sub s that lets me, quote, correctly sample this signal, which really just means sampling the signal according to the sampling theorem to avoid aliasing. And that concludes our examples.